Hey guys, we received another package today, so we have an un unpacking video again. And well, this is something that actually cost me how much? How much did they value it? They value it for 98 bucks. I actually paid for it $190, but this should be a controller. The privilege version of the wind solar hybrid controller. Actually, it's mainly for me for wind, but I'll probably also use it for solar. Let's see. So what do we have inside? Hmm, some kind of instruction. Uh, looks nicely packed. I just don't get it. Why actually did they flip? Uh, like vice versa, the, the, the internal to the external. I mean, like, I don't understand this. Maybe there, there was a good reason, but I'm not sure. Uh, we have cables and connections for the dump load because it has the dump load inside. It has a couple of uh, complementary MC4 connectors. And I see there is a screwdriver for them as well, right? Yeah, yeah, there they, they have this, this simple tool to, to extract, to, to crack, to click, whatever. Uh, they have it. This is the antenna for the Wi-Fi. Yeah, for this one specifically. And the cable as well, okay. As well as a dump load resistor. It's different. I already see that it's very different from those that were in my blue controllers that I actually currently haven't used. Those for 12, 24 volts. This one should be 12, 24 or 48 selectable. Oh, come on, let me take it out. And the controller itself, let me see if they actually did it good. So it's C certified ROHS as well and solar and wind is rated for 1.1. Well, I mean, that's good if that is written like that. And that is very interesting that the rated for 4866 volts is uh, the, the top range. That is something very interesting. I have never seen this kind of marking before, 48 till 66, but I'm not sure. And the manufacturing date actually was year 24 and that was the month of seven right now we have the end of august so it's quite fresh i would say oh some username and password for the wi-fi i believe it must have the application to be used uh with it um looks nicely done nice nice nicely packed everything is 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 is, is intact it is okay so let me check the instructions so i will do the, the further review of course i will open it as well so we need to check what's inside definitely in there and in there. So yeah, just wait a little bit. Okay guys, uh, disassembled I, this unit for you. Um, you see it clearly and nicely, neatly goes apart without any issues, any troubles. You just unscrew a couple of bolts, small ones, and everything is aluminum. This is aluminum. I mean, these radiators are all aluminum. This thing is aluminum. That's always very, very nice. But uh, like the rectifier itself, it's connected to these bolts and it's inside. It's 100 amp. I'm not sure if you're able to see, but I've made a picture where you can clearly see what's inside. Uh, it has a capacitor. It has the, uh, how do you call this thing with the, with the copper wire? I also, again, I forgot uh, <laughs> the word. The, oh man, the spindle? No, no, not the spindle. Well, you got me, actually. And this clearly means, I mean, the combination of these two elements clearly means that it will be the upping uh, controller. So it will actually boost the voltage from the low voltage to the higher voltage to charge the batteries for whatever system you have. As that is clearly says in the description that it has to reach 8 volts for 12 volt system to 16 volts for 24 volt system and 32 volts for the 48 volt system to actually start charging the battery bank and this means that the booster actually works i mean i have no issues with how it's actually built uh it's all done quite nicely we just all have to like check it how it will be in the works so let's do this and one more thing guys before actually getting back to uh, checking it in production mode uh, so in instruction like i mean that's everything that i already actually have seen on the product page there is nothing new uh, for me here, but I mean the instruction is quite detailed. I mean it, it, it's really explanatory good enough uh, It has everything inside and additional they sent uh, these kind of two um, like a4 uh, Pieces of paper with information how to actually like what what do you actually quick quick guide? How, how do you connect everything and actually if you have Wi-Fi 
what do you uh, how do how do you get the application because it has it it should be having because well i have the wi-fi model and i mean the application should be should be inside uh and well how to set the battery the, there is a quite clear and simple guide how to actually do this in my case it's gel uh the the the, the, the battery there are buffer batteries that i'm using so i won't actually even change anything i will check if it's actually the the, the one as it says in the instruction and one more thing i haven't mentioned it to you but the resistor has a marking on it it is like 1500 watts and 5 ohm resistance um i mean it's definitely bigger than the, the ones that I have on my blue controllers for 1224 volt system, uh, but it's not that big enough as I have the one, for example, for 4000 watts and 5 ohm, uh, because that one is like hell a lot bigger, like five times or even bigger. But this one is really kind of still small for me. Um, I don't care if it works, it should work. I mean, if, if, if they like evaluated it, that should be fine. Uh, they have actually sent the spare terminals for some reason, I have no idea why, because, well, like the cables are assembled. I mean, just like you connect it easily, quickly, there is nothing specific, but the terminals are like spare. Okay, so be it, I don't care. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's check it in production. What can I tell guys about this controller? It actually has some good features and some bad features. Good features is that it actually works as it should. Uh, and it has a very nice uh, brake fix feature because it will not allow your batteries to get overcharged. That's definitely working fine. I've been testing it for a while. However, the huge minus that I have actually noticed is that to see the realistic output right now, it's zero because it probably had put this into brake. Yes or no? Not sure. Maybe maybe the wind was uh, the wind turbine was rotated, but. Uh, never mind uh, that it doesn't measure the instant output so you have to use some kind of measuring device for example like this one i will give you the link so you can get it uh to actually see what is going on and about charging the charging actually starts on the 48 volt system uh the mppt starts working uh, once the fan reaches the fan they call it fan but it's wind turbine obviously uh, once it reaches the um 32 volts and once it actually reaches 34 uh, what happens uh, it starts actually going uh to production heavily right now what happened probably is because we have yeah 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 that's definitely the brakes uh, had worked i believe i believe the m m5 is m3 is stopped no 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 it's not it's actually sitting in there you see that's a very unique fact once these two are aligned so the bigger one is creating a turbulence for the smaller one so like this is uh, what happens from time to time uh, it actually rotates and, st and and stops spinning i mean this the smaller one the currently that is on the back end um uh, yeah that's that's how it works but in general the stuff seems to be working and working nice i'm not sure yet with which with, with which turbine will i use probably with the ft1000 that i have currently dismantled uh, i would need to do some maintenance for it uh and well uh i just have to test if all the functionalities work properly if it's actually doing what it should so far i'm i'm happy the only thing i cannot show you right now is how to connect to wi-fi and to check what's inside the application because like it has this kind of a module it has this kind of um thing to use the dedicated app the, the provider hasn't actually sent me the link yet for it i don't know if i will be able to release the video with it or without it i don't want to delay it too much but let's just wait and see uh, the settings are very simple, uh, you have to just go through this stuff and uh, then you have all those items selectable, settable, fully. But the main setting here is uh, what you have to do is once you get to the, yeah, bet TN, then one is for the gel batteries, two is for, I don't know what, three and four, like four different types of batteries you can use for this. You see, it actually gets some production. Uh, out of this wind turbine and then one two three four are different for levels of the um, voltage of the system uh, so 12 24 uh, or 40 i believe also it can go with 36 i'm not sure um but yeah that's uh, that, that that's it so you see the the braking resistor has been in the uh, has been actually in use that's that's the symbol that it has uh, taken place like that's the, that's the, that's the, the, this kind of sign uh, and well, 
I mean, that's that's pretty everything that you have to know about this controller. It's pretty good one. Yeah, the braking resistor was actually removed. You see, now now it was, now removed. So now it's now it's now it's working on charging mode. It clearly indicates when the braking once the braking happens. The only thing is that you have to always like uh, click to see what's going on because the lights will go off. It really intervenes with the braking resistor very smartly. I like how this works. I like this one. I'm really not happy with this one. Don't ever ever. If you see this trademark, this is a Ukrainian made and I'm really sorry about uh, that this guy didn't do a good job to actually do the nice controller, but he's charging like three times in this one, for example. And that's crazy. That's crazy. But this one is definitely not worth it and not good. I'm having a lot of troubles and struggles with it. Um, I mean, that's... That's not for you guys to, to actually know. But so far, so far, so good. Um, let's wait once I put it on something more decent. Because, well, M3 is obviously a small wind turbine. It will actually probably even leave with those two, as it was before. But I was initially planning it for the FT-1000, and probably I will. Probably I will. Let's just wait and see. So thanks for now, guys, and, well, see you later. And I thought to actually finish this video, but in the end uh, the seller replied and he actually sent me the application, so I connected it to the Wi-Fi, you see now it has this kind of status, and the green light flashes now slowly, uh, that one. So let me show you how it looks inside the application, because for this exact money that I paid for it, and let me remind you, it cost me only $189, um, this application allows you to do a lot. And well, that's uh, that's definitely worth it. So let's check how it looks inside the app. Okay, guys, so I have prepared my screen recorder for you. I will actually do it right now and we will see the video. Uh, how actually does it work? I will play, put it here somewhere on the, on, the, on the side. So you are definitely able to see what's going on inside the app. So this is the application that I have uh, in here. And well, uh, the login instructions are, instructions are quite clear, no issues with that. Uh, if you just like follow them, it's five minutes to set up. Uh, then once you get into the equipment tab and there on top, you can see the several different types of um, equipment that can be actually connected to this application to monitor them all in one app. So solar controllers, off-grid inverters, hybrid inverters, uh, I don't know what's the complementary scenery, whatever, a photovoltaic system, battery charger, and wind solar hybrid controller. That's the one that I have. So we just click inside. You will see the state. It's online. We take a look at go to view into the tails, and we see what's going on inside. Um, like it has four tabs, um, obviously some are for set, fold, battery and operating parameters, but uh, let me let me give you this the thing. So I've mentioned to you that this device has got a, like really a minus that it doesn't show the instant consumption on the screen of the controller itself, but it does this on the application. Um, you can you definitely see this and uh, it, the, the, the main thing with this application is that it literally works as a normal um, whenever from the world application. So you don't have to like physically connect to the device because the device has a logger. Logger sends all data to kind of a, some kind of a server and then server pulls it up uh, and gets it to your application, to your client. Uh, that's how it works. And well, basically that's it. Um, I mean, whenever you have internet on your device, uh, you can check, you can track what's going on immediately. So you see the values have changed a couple of times during this time because, well, it, it doesn't allow like um, instant immediate monitoring, but it like updates the data uh, after a certain amount of time. Uh, it's just like for monitoring. Uh, then uh, there is an interesting thing, a parameter of apparatus. I believe this is wrong because uh, I don't trust that this is like 0 0.5 kil kilowatts of uh, PV charging rated power and wind charging rated power because I've seen already today um, 670, I think, on it from the wind turbine because I connected FT2000 L2 there just to see how it goes. Goes perfectly, absolutely perfectly. I mean, I just wonder if it will be able to bear all the load. I just know I will have to like um, now talk to the 
engineers to figure out what is the realistic maximum capacity of this controller. Because I also don't trust the 1.2 kilowatt uh, for wind. It definitely can hold more from what I see. And on the historical data uh, tab, uh, there is a kind of a graph they deliver. It's it's poorly designed, I would say. Yes, it's, it's poorly designed, but still it gives you some kind of visual, I don't know. What else? Set parameters, you can change something here. Uh, for you can, but this set parameters mainly is for the lighting. Uh, these controllers are mainly meant for street lights in China, for example. Uh, but they can be used for the home wind turbines because home wind turbines are relatively small. Um, that is why they can they can be used there as well. So like this screen is for for that. Uh, fault parameters is uh, to check whatever you have uh, errors. Maybe photovoltaic array on the water is abnormal abnormal because I have no. Uh, solar connected into it so that's why it's kind of okay and the battery parameters um also you can change if you if you want if, if you need to change them but let me just explain you one type battery type once you select you see the drop down it has four options they are like really poorly designed still but uh, you have the instruction what to select from uh, and it's not that tough so first is lead acid or gel Second was second one is lithium iron phosphate. Third one is the eternal lithium, and the fourth one is the custom, um, fully custom setup. So you just either click again on something uh, on the acid, or just click somewhere, uh, or or just click submit. Or if you want to to like confirm the change, or if you click somewhere aside, if you want to cancel this, and then there is an interesting thing. Uh, I will have to like quickly explain you how to change the. Uh, value a number of battery strings. Uh, it means that actually how many of the batteries are in uh, series. How does this controller understand that? So if lead acid is chosen, it thinks that you are using uh, four, you're using 12 volt banks uh, batteries. And I have four of them in series to reach 48 volts. That's why I have input four. But if I would have had the lithium ferrum phosphate, then each cell had 3.2 volts. And I mean, literally to reach 48 volt system, you have to get 16 of them. So you have to enter this number exactly in here. So you have to input 16 in here inside. I will not change anything right now because, well, it's working obviously already. Um, and yeah, you may see, oh, operating program, maybe probably the wind. I think the wind turbine has stopped. Yeah. It, it, it just like barely rotates so 15 volts is the true 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 value right uh, that's correct um that is basically it as always i'm giving you the links to this controller under the in the description under the video so you are able to check it and to let me know or don't let me know what you think about it uh, you can use it oh it's obviously a good one um what can I add? I can add that the MPPT actually works kind of interestingly here from what I've seen so far. Uh, once the turbine, what, let's let's imagine that the gust goes, the turbine spins up, uh, it will actually increase the current really nicely and slowly to like hold it very greatly to, to like really get the max out of it. But then when the wind dies and it can die almost instantly and it actually removes the current almost immediately, and you can even see sometimes it, it, the, the, the output will actually drop to zero, but it just like tries to keep the turbine spinning and rotating. So it will add, add up additional a little bit lighter within, within maybe a second, half a second. So it really like works in, a, in an interesting mode. I haven't seen this, this way of working yet. It is not a power car. It is like fully automated. It is definitely some kind of um, algorithm that works with trying to get uh, the max value and trying to keep the turbine spinning not to allow it to underspin or to like stop um it works perfectly with slowing the turbine down uh, if the battery voltage is reached to its limit uh, that is definitely good i have seen that but yeah that's that's in, in everything for now and well what can i add subscribe for more as always Thanks, see you.